Can you share your story from New Delhi to New York as a core professional into cybersecurity and what are your key priorities? First of all, Deepak, it's uh, truly an honor to be with you uh, sharing this screen because uh, you are in true sense a veteran. You've been working longer than I have been on the planet. So, you know, <laughs> the experience that you have is very, very valuable. And I feel truly honored to be sharing the screen with you. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I will start with, uh, I'm, our journey has actually been very straightforward. Uh, I am still at my first job. I started this back when I was in college. And uh, it's been over a decade that we've been running this company. For six years, we were a services company where we were doing vulnerability assessment, penetration testing. If you know, when the Beam application was launched, UPI was launched, we were responsible for its end-to-end -end security. Uh, we did security for a lot of very large companies during that time, uh, which was super, uh, it was like 2017, 2018. So from 2012 to 2018, six years of doing services. Uh, we did quite well. Uh, we were growing pretty fast, but we figured that's not a scalable business. Um, I have a lot of bad qualities in me. The one I'm not working on is my impatience. So went ahead and uh, you know said, look, uh, no matter what company I build, I knew that I will be spending 16, 18 hours a day and seven days a week in trying to build that. So the impact that we could create would be way more exponentially higher if we build a product than a services company. So we actually decided to you know, shut down and pivot our services company in 2018. And that's when you mentioned John Chambers, that's where John got involved uh, with our vision of the product. That's where I moved to the US in 2019. And, uh, and it's been now five years that we've been, uh, we've been selling the product. We've been very fortunate every year. Uh, we've been growing at least 100% year over year. Some years it's been even more than that. And uh, right now we've become one of the hottest cybersecurity companies in the world. So we are very fortunate that way. So it's 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 a very simple uh, you know thing. It's a decade of work uh, only doing cybersecurity and that's where we are, Deepak. So okay, I can say there are exponential increase in AI-driven data transactions. That is leading to misinformation and bias scripting in the information systems. How do you safeguard the data in this AI-driven world? See, Deepak, if you think about AI, right, uh, firstly, let's understand it's more like augmentation of your intelligence. So when you think about very smart people, right, let's take an editor of this video who will be editing this. They can use AI to actually smartly understand the transcript, make cuts automatically that AI will understand one section of a question to another one, et cetera, et cetera. On the other side, there can be a bad person who actually takes the same video and actually makes me speak something that I'm not even speaking. Mm -hmm. So if you think about AI, it is not a tool by itself, but it really is an amplification of whether you want to do good or you want to do bad. Now, there are a lot of bad guys using AI, and that is the reason why your question is very relevant, that today uh, when bad people and hackers, which have some bad intentions, use AI, does hacks become more deadly? The unfortunate reality is yes. And that is the reason why in order to counter that, you need to fight fire with fire. So that is the reason why having AI embedded into security products, the way we have that, we've done that, just uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, I launched uh, our Gen AI agent, which is called uh, uh, which is called SafeX. It's a mobile application that anybody can download. If you go to YouTube, you can search for it, and it'll give you the keynote that I recently gave on the launch of that at the Fair Conference in Washington D.C. Uh, this was the first week of October when we did that in 2024. So. So, so that is where, you know, we actually started uh, in terms of trying to see how we can embed AI. And I would go to the extent of saying that any cybersecurity product that you deal with today, if they don't have AI in their product or they don't have AI in the roadmap, you should question why do you have that product in the first place? Absolutely. So, uh, so that's how I look at, you know, being able to counter the threats from AI. It has to be countered with AI. And any product which says they don't need AI or they don't have AI, uh, it's almost like electricity has been invented. And there are 
you know, people who will say, I will live without electricity. Not, it won't last for too long. And having said that, how does AI and ML powered platform provide a comprehensive assessment of your organization's cybersecurity health? Deepak, that's our business. That's what we do for some of the largest companies in the world. What we try to do is we try to go ahead, uh, we try to go ahead and really provide the cybersecurity posture for companies, which basically mm -hmm. means that what is the place where you are uh, when it comes to you know your your uh, your maturity in terms of cybersecurity resilience, both before a breach and after a breach. And in order to calculate that, when we go to a company, uh, and these are the biggest names you can think of in the world, Google, Facebook, Netflix, ADP, Chevron, Victoria's Secret, KFC, Novartis, GSK, British Telecom, they're all our customers. They're long list, hundreds of very, very large customers that we serve today. Uh, when we are serving them, Deepak, the big thing there is that we actually take all of their internal telemetry. So if we go to a large company, we will go ahead and we will integrate with a Qualys, Tenable, Rapid7, you know, Wiz, Palo Alto Network, Zscaler, CrowdStrike. The, we have over 100 API integrations where we put yes. all of that telemetry together. And once we put all of that telemetry together, Deepak, we then go ahead and add to external threat intelligence that in your industry, what kind of threats are active? So we know what's your internal security by all these products. We know what is your external threat landscape. We marry the two together and then add business context on top of it and then allow you to go ahead and uh, you know we, we put all of that data in a neural network and then allow you to query that using Gen AI. Uh, that's the app we launched called SafeX. And, uh, you know, that is something which which is pretty exciting. And again, using AI against all the hacks which are happening, which will also use AI. Great, great input. How does SafeX leverage data-driven insights to provide comprehensive cybersecurity solutions for enterprises? If you can throw some light. Certainly. So, Deepak, see what happens is that... Uh, if you think about SafeX, it's really a Gen AI wrapper, which not only goes ahead and shows you things, but also does things. Let me explain you what I mean by that, right? Yes. See the power of Gen AI, because SafeX is Gen AI for cybersecurity. And the power of that in a very simple way is number one, you can get access to information in a very natural language, which was very difficult in the past. So you can now go into your mobile app and using voice, you can simply click a button and ask a question like, tell me my top risks. Since yesterday, what has changed in my environment? I read about a new hack like Clorox or MGM, whatever. How does that hack affect me? Tell me more about North Korea trying to attack me. Is there a threat actor around that? Any question you can think of. Oh. Beautiful. You can you can apply you can simply go and click a button and ask in English, and SafeX will give you the answer based on your telemetry. Because remember, we take inputs from all your security products. Think of us as a layer on top of all your existing cybersecurity products which are out there, and we put all of that together and then give you the insights in a very 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 simple way. So that is really how SafeX is able to apply insights. It doesn't just stop there in giving you insights. It also allows you to do things. So it's an AI agent, which is a mobile app, where you can make it do things to say, hey, I want to add a new third party. I want to add a risk scenario. Can you add it for me? So it is able to go ahead and do that work for you also. So it shows you things, at the same time does things. Everything on a very simple, clean mobile application called SafeX. Cybersecurity is a core business risk that must be understood and managed by non-technical executives as well. What is your take on it? It is not a job of only CIO, CTO, CISO. A common man, it can be a threat can enter to any layer. You're absolutely right, Deepak. And especially in today's day and age where businesses are dependent on technology, if technology of a business gets hacked, businesses stop. Mm -hmm. And if businesses stop, it means every leader of the business, whether mm -hmm. it's the CEO or the CFO or a mm -hmm. board member, it is mm -hmm. everybody's problem. 
And that's precisely the reason why uh, it is so important to go ahead and talk about cybersecurity risk in a non-technical way. How do you convert bits and bytes into dollars and cents? So rather than going and just saying, oh, we have so many vulnerabilities and so many people clicked on a phishing link, the better way to communicate to CEO or CFO or the board is when you talk about our top risk like ransomware, our probability of ransomware in our environment is 23%, while the industry average is 15%. And if a ransomware does occur, we can expect a $150 million impact. The moment you say this, it becomes a very simple thing to understand, which non-technical people can easily understand and then take decisions based on that, rather than technical jargons which used to happen in the past. Finally, as data grows in value and AI becomes more widespread, safeguarding privacy and ensuring the responsible use of technology are critical to building a secure digital future. What is your take on it? I totally agree with that, uh, Deepak. See, if you think about it, the aviation industry became popular and commercialized only when safety became a non-negotiable. Correct. Exactly in the same way, true embracing of digital will only happen when the way safety was to airplanes, cybersecurity will become to digital. It is still not there. And there are some very fundamental problems because most people are not even digitally literate. They are literate. Now, of course, literacy is going up, but nobody is taught how to use the internet in the right way. Taught how to use the mobile phone in the right way. Right. And that is the reason, unfortunately, hackers, fraudsters are able to take the advantage of so many people and therefore just get things done in an unfortunate way. And with the AI revolution, there's way more sophistication and frequency. Both of attacks are going up. So therefore, I would say that safeguarding everything using AI within cybersecurity is going to be the absolute fundamental requirement for a safer digital future. 